Is the school system killing our kids? 18-year-old senior Marcus Wheeler tweeted, there is going to be a suicide right before he took his own life. He did this after finishing his track lesson at 8.50 a.m. He was a good student who ran cross-country track, and it came as a surprise that he would shoot himself in the head. Law enforcement found his body in the breezeway of the gym. Jose, there's been a stint of suicides that's also happened in Palo Alto, and a lot of kids have been speaking out about why is this happening. A lot of the th students have been confessing that they have to have high grades, the long hours, going to school from 8 o'clock to 3.30, not to mention an extracurricular activity such as sports or hobbies, which maybe sometimes you have to wake up at 4 in the morning if you're playing basketball or on the track. Also to SAT scores. Um, there's this feeling of um, desolate feeling where they say that it's a bleak uh, keeping up with the pressures, but not sure where they're going. And of course, there's yeah. just the adolescence of being a teenager with growing into yourself. 16 and 17, you have your hormones, you're not, you need sleep, deprivation is happening. Is it too much? Is, it, is the schools requiring too much from the kids, long hours, too much homework? And is this pressure being mounting on kids to where they want to kill themselves? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, first of all, it's very sad to see a young person, a teenager, take his own life like this. But the reality is that, in my opinion, I, th I don't think that the problem is uh, the, the amount of work that they are supposed to be doing. I think that uh, it's proven that the, low, the, the workload that they have to follow here in the States is much less than in other countries. Uh, I think that the, the problem really lies in the fact that there is a complete disconnection from what we are expecting these new generations to achieve and how are we preparing them at school. I don't think the problem is the load, I think it's the quality of education that they're getting and the fact that we are farming these kids into the college system or the for-profit college system that makes you believe at 17 that if you don't make it to a certain university, if you don't get certain grades, your whole life is going to set up, be set up for failure. That I do see. The fact that, that he had a very intense workload and he was, a, he was a state champion, I don't know if that had much to do with the fact that there's a series of these events happening. But I think that now with social media, with the, the way kids uh, relating between each other, the bullying, I do think that they live in a stressful, in a, in a, in a, I, I would like to say a little bit more stressful than before, just because of the immediacy and the constant flux of information and relationships and text and bickering and talking behind the backs and all of that, which I feel that has much more to do with the current state of, of the youth than the amount of work that they have to do at school. Yeah, so there is, perhaps the standards are now, before in the past, they're much more, we're now having social media, we're not, we don't have private lives anymore. He did tweet a couple of um, things like help, I wish my life was back to where it was three months ago. So maybe he was having an outcry and maybe there are things now with social media keeping up with these standards that are a exactly. bit of an illusion. And and perhaps now kids are not able to know where they're supposed to gauge. And, and, and maybe the bar is set so high that kids are not being able to find themselves and being able to relate. Also with social media, there's this level of uh, competing with one another. Yeah. Um, is, 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 is up for debate of, if, is this actually uh, good for the youth or could it be detrimental? I think, I think the, the technology and the smartphones and texting and, and all of these virtual ways of communicating definitely have bring some practices that are not good. We've heard and read about and talk about these, these behaviors that teenagers in, engage with their, their, their smartphones, where they don't sleep all through the night because they're texting with other kids. They are all the time worried about what is being said, what is being posted about them on social media. So there is definitely this element that they have to worry about that maybe 10 years before we didn't have to worry about. You right. didn't have to worry about all these things once you were done with school that didn't follow you home. Now it follows you home and it's there in your phone all the time. Everything that is pressuring you is there all the time. So I think that can have an impact. So perhaps we need to even go into human behavior and the psychologists and I the counselors so. need to dive in a little bit deeper right now because this obviously if there's a chain and this is something going on, we need to dig a little deeper and find out the psychology. Exactly. I don't think there's enough going on on counseling and making sure kids are okay I, I agree during completely. this process yeah. of high school and making sure the workload is okay and talking to your... 
you know, we rely on the parents and the parents rely on the school and somewhere along the line, the message gets missed. Yeah. And then we see these outcries or these tragedies coming out. And then we see them time and time again. So where is the breakdown in the system? Obviously, they, we need to kind of regroup and go back and say, listen, maybe we need to have an infrastructure with human behavior. How do we teach kids to be able to cope with exactly. the certain um, standards that are in today's life that we know it as today? And also, you know, re-examine the human um, psychology of where kids are, are, are how they're feeling and maybe do a test on that instead of just relying on the SATs in the brain exactly. and you have to get a certain score to be able to make it into college. Maybe we should have a test score on emotionally how are you feeling and physically how are you feeling it's, and are you equipped It's great that you're bringing it. that up because just today I watched uh, this, this uh, funny YouTube video, a music video where these, these teenagers, he's singing to the camera and he's saying exactly, why did you teach me all these things at school that don't work in real life? Why did you didn't teach me how to invest my money? How, why you didn't teach me how to, to keep, you know, keep myself healthy? But you did taught me cursive, which I don't use ever in my life, but I don't know how to invest my money. How do I prepare myself financially? How do I set up goals? All of these basic life skills are being lost on education, where we are very concerned with aptitude tests, and we're very concerned with no child being left behind, because it all boils down to one thing, money. Where are the money going? What are the things that are being uh, paid for in the school districts around the country? At the end, we are seeing that science, we're seeing that, that extracurricular counseling is the first things that are getting cut from the budgets at schools. And now we see that there's, like you said, there's not enough counseling, there's not enough support emotionally for these kids to go through high school with their adolescence and their goals clear to take good decisions. No, I agree. And we like to hear how you think we should find solutions for the kids and more suicides that are happening. Please leave your comments below and thank you for watching The Lip.